You're welcome back. It is still the AM Weekend Show. And just like I said, we are going to be taking a look at everything going on on the front pages of our national dailies. And we have just been joined by the one and only Barista Chidi Ujatumba, a human rights lawyer and CEO Ujatumba and Company. You're uh -huh. welcome to the show, and sir. San. Good morning. <laughs> and, and San in the making. Thanks for having me. Happy weekend. You look, <laughs> you look chill. You look, you know. You look ready to you look, fire down. <laughs> yes. Does he look ready? No, he, I was going to say he looks no, 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 no. He looks combative. Yeah. He looks like he looks there is a lot of energy around him. He wants to he's just taming it. No, you understand what is in the inside. He's taming him right <laughs> there's energy in him. He's buttoned up to the well, neck. Well, actually, so you know there's problem. We have enough reason to actually take that position <laughs> right now because yeah. I just glanced through the papers and I'm seeing violence everywhere. Lot, everywhere. God. Let's just start with the Let's, Vanguard. Okay. We'll begin with the Vanguard. So the cover story here says, face to face with Okwama residents in the forest, we are dying. Army should allow us return home. The writers say how genuine, how gunmen in four speed boats killed soldiers, villagers. Soldiers killed our people before the gunmen arrived. We survive on fruits, palm nuts, no food, no water. Who invited General Amabain to Okwama? Riddles in the investigations 22 days after. Still on this paper, transborder traders now reject Naira. Holding Naira turns risk to business. CFA safer. But Brisky convicted knows fate April night. El Rufai prepares to fight Tinubu in two courts. Why we eject electricity tariff, says federal government. Spends 2.9 trillion Naira on subsidy. Fines AEDC 200 million naira for wrongfully mm -hmm. billing consumers following subsidy removal. Olubadon designates designate Hale and Hearty, Kingmakers. Edo Guba, NRM threatens to scuttle process. Still on this paper, Chibok Girls, gory tales of trauma, stigma 10 years after. That's what we have on this paper. Okay, let's go to Saturday Tribune. Um, the, the headline says, 19 killed, buildings set ablaze by herdsmen in Kogi. Play two crisis, speaker swears in nine APC members, leaves out seven. And more headline says, a do impeachment, panel ends sitting as Shaibu stays off. Federal government has spent 2.9 trillion naira on electricity subsidy, says Power Minister. Says federal government still protects 85% electricity, electricity consumers. Gumi should show us a single hadith where the prophet negotiated with terrorists, says Sheikh Akuba Gold. That's on page 13. Olubadon designate fit to be enthroned, says Kingmakers. Installation process may wait till after Salah. Over the masthead on Bobriski, it says court convicts Bobriski for Naira abuse. EFCC withdraws money laundering charge. Finally, bribery trial. Ganduje attacks Kano governor. That's on page six. All right, moving on to Saturday Telegraph. The boldest headline here says, FG student loan faces obstacles. The writers say, Asu, we want grants for students, not loans. We were not consulted, says Asu president. Don's kick against policy. It's a good development. Nigerians should let it work. Ex-VC, Mimiko, Deputy Speaker, Carlo. And also on this paper, EFCC files 26 court charges against a mefile. Tinubu announces closure of special investigation of CBN. Court convicts Bobriski for Naira abuse to deliver verdict on April 9th. Still on this paper, SEC, okay, prepared for banks recapitalization. Electricity tariff hike. Brace up for more increases, FG tells Nigerians. New tariff, gradual migration to full deregulation, says Ade Labu. Insists FG spends 2.93 trillion naira on subsidy. Hike in electricity tariff, insensitive, inhuman, says reps, minority caucus. 
Next, sanctions AEDC for wrong billing. Two-year-old sold for 60,000 Naira in Cross River. You'll find that in page 5. Olubadon designates or lacunlaying returns. And finally, earthquake shakes U.S. East Coast. That's what we have on this paper. Let's go to this day, the Saturday. And the bold headline says, Tariff hike. Federal government hits of plan to move all electricity consumers to band A in three years. Says government to gradually withdraw subsidies set to save $1.4 trillion in 2024. NERC finds Abuja Disco 200 million naira to viol for violation of order on building. Instruct power distributor to refund affected cons customers. A code disco moves to reimburse customers wrongly billed. Northern Elders, Atiku, Ajero, fault tariff hike. Let's go over the masthead. 4.8 magnitude earthquake rattles U.S. cities. Afrexin Bank delivers impressive 2023 result amidst challenging operating environment all right moving on to the guardian the cover story here says don't expect reduction in price of commodities now experts warn nigerians building confidence assertiveness critical for women to succeed in careers that we also have that on this paper and moving on, how sports can deepen peaceful, inclusive society. Still on The Guardian, we have another that says, Olubadon designates Olakun Lehin will be crowned soon, says Oba Adebimbe. Power, on power, 2.9 trillion naira spent on subsidy. FG still protects 85% customers, says Minister. Tinubu Hill, special investigator for job well done at CBN. Fuel scarcity looms as Q surfaces nationwide. Provide good governance, not seeking to malign me, Ganduje tells Kanu governor. And finally, impeachment. Panel rounds of sitting set to write report to determine Shaibu's fate. That's what we have on The Guardian. The boldest headline on Daily Trust this morning says 300% tariff hike. Nigerians reject haphazard billing by discos. We, we are on band C, but they placed us on band A. Minister insists only 1.5 million customers will be affected. AEDC fined 200 million naira for short-changing consumers. Parents of Kano, Kaduna, missing children cry for help. I can't sleep, says father of kids and wife. Over 300 cases recorded in Kano. Over the masthead, I never thought I would become an actress, says Sangai. Lastly, gunmen kill 19 in Kogi community. Many missing. All right, moving on to the Saturday Times. Inflation, why CBN's monetary strategies may fall short. Ripples over hike in electricity tariff. It's insensitive evil will worsen poverty says Atiku and others step towards efficient electricity sector says the federal government NEC finds AEDC 200 million naira orders refunds for customers we also have a headline that says high interest rate CBN's T bills drying up funds from the private sector says LCCI on page 16 NYSC jumped to strengthen credible mobilization process. That's on page four. Some people believe I am deaf and dumb, says Jude Ohoha. And still on this paper, casualties in Kaduna as Shite group clashes with police. Abuja Metro Line will be ready for commissioning by May, says Wike. Still on this paper, my problem with Real Housewives TV series, that's from Caroline, Carolina Hutchins. Nigeria records 1,580 human rights violations in March alone, NHRC reveals. But Brisky to be sentenced 
April 9th as EFCC finds over 180 million Naira in his account. That's what we have on the Saturday Times. The punch is busy. The headline says, marketers blame supply hitch as fuel queues resurface in Lagos and Ogun. Back, uh, back marketers make brisk business and amid queue. NMPC says, a papa depot empty. Queues will ease off before salad break next week, says Memman and Ipman. All right. Bash Ali says, infertility is not the reason for my decision not to have children. And here we have newborns for sale. How poverty, ignorance exposed girls to traffickers. I started cooking at seven, says a blind chef. The lower third on the, this paper says, anti-party states PDP groups list weekly autumn orders for sanction. And above the headline, labor threatens showdown as federal government insists on electricity tariff hike. EFCC arranged a mefele or molly on fresh 26 counts on Monday. Preparation for new Olubadan's coronation begins as family shares Ashwe B. <laughs> Court sentences Bob Risky, April 9, convicts returns to Convict returns to EFCC custody. That's all for the punch. All right, moving on to Saturday Sun. The cover story says electricity tariff hike, FG under fire. Opposition lawmakers, OPS, Southern Middle Belt Group say action insensitive, exploitative. We are consulting. We'll take action soon, says NLC. Power, 2.9 trillion naira spent on subsidy. FG still protects 85% customers, says Minister. Olubadon designates returns. Meet Ibadan kingmakers, receive visitors, division threaten nomination of new monarch. Why Labour Party crisis festers? We'll find that on page 26. The writers say NLC, NAS members, a papa faction unite against Abure. INEC doesn't have to monitor party convention, says youth leader. We are open to political solution. This is from Namdekano's lawyer. And also on this paper, Igbo youths pass vote of confidence in Orji Kalu. Says senators massive projects making things easier for Oti in Abia North. And finally on this paper, Bob Brisky convicted for Naira abuse. So over to you, Barista Chidi. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. But well, we start with this to last unpack. paper here. And it's, of course, talking about the electricity tariff hike. Yes. We, I've seen different headlines, and it looks like a lot is going on at the same time. Different things have been said about it. So let's just focus on this particular one here. It says, FG under fire. Opposition, lawmakers, OPS, Southern Middle Belt Group say action is insensitive, exploitative. What do you have to say about that? Well, um, you can uh, uh, bear me witness that uh, there has been incessant um, hike in electricity tariff over a long period of time now. You know, there are so many discos, you know, providing for so many um, areas in Nigeria. So what some are saying is that it's not, it's not, it's, the hike is not uniform. What some pays is actually different from what other people are paying. You can see that there's, um, um, there's a writer there that says that, that Nick has sanctions uh, one of the discos, you understand, for over, you know, overcharging. overcharging customers. And I've also sanctioned them to reform the monies back to those customers who were actually overcharged. So that's one thing. Another thing is that whether they would definitely carry it out at the end of the day. Now, one thing I have to say here is that all over the world, eh, there is subsidy. You cannot remove subsidy from governance. Subsidy is one of the enabling environment that government pro provides at the end of the day to smoothen things and to make a whole lot of, you know, amenities available for the end, for end users, for the masses. So, you know, removing it entirely, hiking it, we can understand, but removing, yes, definitely, it is the removal of the subsidy that would definitely cause the hike in electricity tariff. What I'm saying is that 
I don't think it's something that the masses can contain at the same time. Removal of a uh, fuel. fuel subsidy, removal of a uh, electricity subsidy. And now look at these are the two major things that can, you know, either make or mar your business in this country. When you talk about energy, fuel, and when you talk about electricity, okay, for a very long time, Nigeria has been suffering from, um, you know, epileptic power supply. Uh, and and the, the rate at which this tariff and hike comes, you cannot uh, commensurate it with the rate at which light is steady. You understand? The, 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 the tariff comes, you know, periodical as though that's the way the power is being supplied for a very long time now a lot of people in this country they don't, they don't have light you know nigeria is still dependent on you know a generator and all the rest of them so i think in as much as they are talking about this hike this is a wonderful opportunity for us to think about renewable energy i repeat it again renewable energy if the private sector could be brought in, if the government can enter into partnership with other companies, so many companies all around the world, more especially China, you understand, we can bring in renewable energy. Whether from your own house, from your own uh, solar and all the rest of them, you can generate and use your own energy without anybody, you understand, determining what you have to do at the end of the day. Those who are into solar production and usage, they can bear me witness that once you have gotten all the things and the inverter that you need, you can produce and you can use your own energy. Also, something that is very, very paramount for us to avert our mind to is that before the last administration left office, you can bear me witness that President Muhammad Buhari, you know, I think get, get, uh, passed a law, passed uh, yeah, a bill into law that states can now generate their own energy. Okay, you can see what is happening in Aba. So if state government can also, you know, capitalize on that um, legislation and start looking at how they can partner with private sectors to generate and add it to what they have with the national grid, okay, it will go a long way to, you know, um, help people to have access to a whole lot of energy because dependency on federal government is wearing them out. The population is increasing and we can't keep on depending on the federal government to be generating and to be, you know, uh, working with all these discos to be distributing energy. They should go ahead to unbundle the energy sector to the grassroots. Isn't, so, isn't that what they are doing? Now? It's what they are doing. It's what they are doing. And, it, and it's working very well. But what, what we are complaining here is that the hike and the removal of the subsidy, you understand, at this very stage, and going into, uh, keeping, putting into consideration what people are going through mm. in in economy, in, in the fall of the Naira, in inflation. I wonder, I wonder how, 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 how the masses can take it out and resist it. The argument of federal government is that annually they spend two point, over two trillion Naira. 2.93 trillion. 2 trillion Naira in subsidizing electricity. Still at that, they are that not subsidizing for anybody. That, that it's only 80 something point something percent they are subsidizing, not for everybody. There are those in band A, and there are those in band C. And they are spending 2.93 trillion. trillion. Isn't, isn't, if you remove that and invest it in renewable energy, don't you think we'll go further? That's what I'm talking about. But one thing is that you have to take the government report with a pinch of salt. Okay? Those, those monies, <laughs> those monies being spent, can we, can we be given a detailed and a transparent of how it was account of how those money were spent. Let me tell you something. If you look at record, the number of people, the number of companies that federal government were paying subsidy during the time Nigeria was working on subsidy, it was one subsidy removed that the number of companies will reduce only more than half. You understand? What they say that they have supplied, what they say that they have subsidized, are they really subsidizing it? You, you can believe me that sometime before the end of last year, we it's also got report that federal government is still subsidizing this fuel that it's that, 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 we're, that, we're, that we're buying a liter 700 naira and all the rest of them. Where do we go from there? When we talk about transparent governance, that's what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. If you say you are spending three points, two point something trillion to subsidize power, can you tell us exactly where that money is going into? Can we know where that money is going into? Where are we seeing it? Where are we seeing it? Where are we seeing where are it? Seeing no, where are we seeing it? Can you be subsidizing and, and at the same time, the 
tariff will be going high and you are still subsidizing. Still subsidizing. What is going on here? And, and who is not, lying to who? We are not seeing the light. We are not seeing I, the I light. We mentioned this just yesterday in my place that we were talking about it. I think we got the whole message about the increase in tariff and all of that. And that's, you know, it was increased and we had to, you know, pay up we had to pay more than we usually do and we noticed that there was no lights now we're supposedly in band a yeah and according to the message that was sent we should have 20 hours lights Life. and just four hours off you know and we've not had <laughs> good that but yesterday said we had i think just four hours do you know we spent the whole night without lights so now coming to this headline now that says Tariff hike, FG hints to plan to move all electricity consumers to band A in three years. Is, is it a good thing at this point? Can it's we say it's a good thing? It's still what we are talking about because they cannot remain more than 80% to band C. You understand? That's the subsidy. They are, they are subsidizing for like 80 something percent of Nigerian citizens. That's what they are talking about. Now, when they gradually move them to band A, it's, a, I don't, it's an indirect way of totally removing, removing the subsidy, mm -hmm. you understand? So that peradventure, that money could be invested in other things. I don't know where they intend to invest the money in. My concern now is, if you're moving everybody to band A, and according to the, the stuff I read yesterday, it says band A should at least now have 20 hours mm -hmm. life. Yes. If we're going to pay that much, if you're saying you're removing the subsidy entirely so that we can all be in band A, how are we going to make sure that we get the light that band A deserves? That, that's another angle of it, okay? Because um, when you move that number of Nigerian citizens into to band, band A, a how you, you understand? You like must to sustain it. It must be sustained. Sustain we are talking so. about technology here. It must be sustained. And when you think about having light up to 20 hours a day. Let me give you a little statistics. In 2023 alone, in 2023 alone, the national grid collapsed not less than 28 times. Oh. The national grid collapsed not less than 28 times. In 2023 alone, in 2024, the national grid has collapsed not less than 6 times. And you're talking about moving this number of citizens from band C to band A, you remove subsidy, and they will be having light how possible is this? That's what I'm talking about. How how can we measure this? That's like moving how, over a hundred yes. homes. How can we measure this? How can we measure this? How can we say that the movement will be successful and also the the, the supply of energy like for twenty hours will be sustainable in that band? How can we measure this? Maybe just maybe since they are removing this subsidy and i'm so interested in this figure this figure is crazy 2.93 trillion the figure is is money staggering yeah it's staggering so maybe that money will be used to invest in a model that can sustain the supply of energy to over 150 million homes okay maybe that's the this plan. is what we call um this is what we call uh, a projection okay i love the projection now do you know the strategies that the federal government rolled out that they were used to counter hardship when subsidy was removed? How many of them worked? Do you know there was a time that the federal government shared five billion naira to all the states? Do you know what they actually gave out to their citizens at the end of the day? Do you know how much that was given to senators for their uh, what do you call it? Um, 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 uh, 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 Constituency. Yes, project. yes. For 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 palliative and all the rest of them. How many of them used it to make life easy for, for the masses at the end of the day? You see, you see, it's easy for you to increase salary because the process of collecting the money from the masses is very, very strategic. You set it up, okay? As you're going to recharge, you are paying at that instant. But you know, the other end is not measured. That's where I'm hammering on. Mm. How do we ensure that we get 20 hour supply of light at the end of the day. And if we don't, whom do we complain to? How are we going to be remunerated at the end of the day? This is a social, it's a social contract, okay? It's a, it's a social contract. You cannot have light except when you buy according to the new tariff. So immediately their law is made. They go ahead and implement it immediately because the gadgets are there, the systems are there. All they need to do is to press one button or the other, the tariff will go high. As you are buying, the, it will reflect in the unit, okay? As you are using, it will reflect on the number of hours and days the unit you have purchased will last. But how do we ensure that the supply of power will get to that 
training hours that they have projected at the end of the day. You see, there's a process of measuring one, but there's no process of measuring the other. There's a gap. That's what I'm saying. It's a big gap. Honestly, it's quite sad. It's a very big gap. It We've been making speculations. Yeah, it's all over. This is what we have all over our headlines. Yes, yes it's, 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 it's one story that covers almost... All, almost, almost all the headlines. Because it affects everybody. Yes, it affects yeah, everybody. It affects everybody. Yeah, another, another important story there. Yeah, I, was, okay, I, I, I don't know whether my mind is working Let's in see. tandem with yours. Tell is me exactly. The student, student loan. loan. <laughs> I was getting there. The student loan uh, bro. Uh, uh, I wanted us to touch the 19 killed before going to the student loans. But 19... We don't have enough time. So I kind of feel that student loan... Yes, that, that student more, loan is a huge It's a bit more thing. pressing right it's now. It's something yes, yes. that we've talked about over and over again and if you could still remember we were asking this question um we are there adequate consultation before mm -hmm. the bill was drafted we are there public symposium we are there what we call a uh, what do you call it um um remind me again um you know kind of a uh, uh, yes, yes, calling out students, calling out uh, those who will be affected by that particular bill. bill. We are there a kind of a 360 okay. degree feedback, you understand, what from ASU, about? from labor, from students, from non-academic staff, from any, every sector that had to do with education. And they say that, yes, they did it. They did this and they did that. Even when the bill was um, kind of uh, withdrawn and sent back to the to the house for them to um, uh, amend some clause, like uh, removing all the problems that will enable uh, a people to assess the bill. So we talked about so many things, trying to make sure that all the it's, it's, it's going to be a square peg in a square hole. Mm -hmm. And now look at the kind of challenges we are going through. Okay, look, let me, is it, this is a symptom of a government that do that does not do their homework very well. Okay, before they come out with something now. I'm going to divide my discussion into two. ASU mustn't, mustn't necessarily use their position here mm. to disrupt student loan. If they are not at home with it, if they were not consulted, okay, let them allow it to flow. They can write their recommendation and discuss it with the bodies, okay, that have been appointed to implement this student loan. Let ASU not be a cog in the will, okay, of the student loan. That, that's what I'm saying. Because what they are talking about there is that whether they were duly consult, consulted or and all the rest of them. Let's forget about that right now. What I'm talking about is that let's look at the practicability, okay? Has a student gone to gain, get that loan? What are the challenges that they are facing, okay? Is this accessible, okay? How much can you get? Has anyone been able to assess this loan? Okay, are there challenges that we should bring to the burner and, and discuss extensively? So, let, if it is only as to not supporting it, I, I think um, they could still find a way to, to go around that and then make it all look very, very inclusive. Because that's they what said I'm, precisely yeah. that we want grants for students exactly. and not loans. Exactly. And the students I don't, for some reason, and ASU are saying we prefer grants to loans mm -hmm. because simply because. Uh, employability is very low outside of school so you don't give us loan and make us indebted right from school we start becoming indebted right from school till we get out of school and then it continues like that there's no chance that we'll be employed after school and asu is re-echoing that same sentiment by students we want grants not loans i don't think asu is getting it right look at the economy of this nation and look at how much the education sector has been battered by bad leadership. Now, if the federal government in its magnanimity, okay, comes out with a project of this nature to give students loan and a lot has been invested into it, I am of the opinion that we should have allowed this process to flow and go through. Mm -hmm. uh, grant is something that can come after what? After loan. There, can, there could even be a grant, okay, and also loan. They can work in pari pursuit because the, the poorest of the poorest could be given a certain grant. But those who know that definitely, if they are going into school, they are they are thinking of. I think that loan. There's nothing wrong with that loan. It has worked in so many in so many nations. It has, it has worked in England. It has worked in the United States of America. The other day, the, 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 the uh, Biden came out and for um, kind of a uh, wrote 
of uh, a whole uh, yes, forgive a whole lot of loan that that student took, but they were unable to pay it back at the end of the day. One good thing about the student loan is that it makes you to think, okay. You know that you're not getting this money to use it to, you know, wear clothes while you are in school and get this money and use it to, you know, spend it on on on, on, on things that are not material. You understand? So it's something that should go directly to your personal development, directly to your tuition, directly to your to your to your to your education. So I, I think it's, how is it paid back? I, I would have <laughs> honestly we don't have enough how time. How is it paid back? If not, there are several there is just so things, much a lot of aspects to go. What what will happen if the student doesn't pay back? That, 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 that's one thing. That, that's one things. thing. But my own concern, my, 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 my biggest concern before the time ticks out is that it's not about loan. It, it's not about the student who wants to or who will pay, pay back or who will not pay back at the end of the day. It's about what am I using that loan to study in school? Curriculum. What am I using that loan to study? If I come out, will I be relevant to this current society? What's even the chance that you yes. get admitted into the particular course that you want to yes. study? There are just too many. No, you would have gotten around. into school even before. Access. Yes, you would have gotten into school. You, know, you, you would have been given admission. In, in the case of the US, forty percent of the students in the US work while studying. Why there is studying? a structure that yes. allows you to work. work. We don't even have it here. It's they full time. Work. Everything is full time. They can work and yet they are not able to pay back the loan. Here, you can't even work. Talk I, I, less it's of scary paying because back. students are even working to eat. Yes. First of all. Yes. Uh, so, yes. They, Talk less and they've not gotten the money to even feed. <laughs> they will not add. Well, let's, because of the bad economy. Let's just keep our fingers crossed let's and just watch crossed. how it works. Like Barista Chidi said, let's give the federal government a chance. Let's yes. see if this is even accessible. Let's see how how far it goes. Let's mm -hmm. see what the challenges will be in the in the long run. So he thinks you think it's a welcome development. I think it's a welcome development. All right. So ASU should not scuttle it. ASU should not.